Three years ago, I approached Mr. Grandison and I said, Usain Bolt has been indicating that he'll be retiring soon from the sport. So I thought that, listen, we have the largest library in terms of images of Usain Bolt in Jamaica. We have been photographing him from he was in high school. And I think that there's no way we could allow Usain Bolt to retire from the sport. And we not put out a publication, you know, depicting his entire career. Based on what Bolt has done for this country, for the people of this country, it was important for us to say thank you um, to Bolt for his contribution. So we decided that we're going to look back at his journey from where he started in high school to where he is now. Anybody would want the, the privilege to do a book on, on Bolt. And um, we've done two or three other books with the Gleaner in the past. And so we had an established working relationship, such a very smooth partnership from day one. We spent roughly a month to a month and a half researching all the images. We went to like hundreds of thousands of images of Bolt. And then now what you're seeing is a book with 241 images. It was really a challenging um, experience because we didn't really want to use any photograph that has been seen before and we want to use photographs that really are catchy and are truly exciting. It's different in that it's not heavy on text. Uh, uh, there are a lot of pictures that were never published before and there are a lot of um, quotes um, from Bolt himself um, over the years. What I was looking for is, um, apart from the regular stuff you see him winning and so on, I wanted a lot of the offbeat stuff, a lot of stuff with him, you know, relaxing with friends, family, with other athletes. Images that probably I myself would have caught him, you know, um, like for example, there's with this one shot with Rio when he's coming out um, again to, to compete and the, the, the light just hit him right in the face. That was perfect. It, you would see that in the, like, the many moods of um, Bolt. And those images that most people would not have seen as yet. For example, with him and you, uh, Johan Blake and a few other athletes um, playing the PlayStation. So I, I, you know, that's what we were looking for. Not the, what you have seen already, those behind the scenes stuff. His close friendship with, um, with Nugent. All of these little things that people don't normally see. I was a little reluctant to accept the assignment when Editor-in-Chief Garfield Grandison asked me to do it. I thought um, sports writers would have been better qualified to write the introduction, but he thought that the style I used in writing and the skills demonstrated would make me a suitable person to write the introduction. Once I got into it, I first of all saturated myself with the Bolt story as a story of historical proportions. If Bolt is legend, then that's a fact of history larger than our times and larger than the places out of which he came. I got to know him from his birth, from his place of birth. I tracked his development through athletics, um, primary school, William Nib High School, and I followed him on the world stage. Uh, I became part of the story so I could write it from the inside. One thing I did with it was to write it at the speed of sprinting. So if you read it, you'll discover that it's a very clipped, fast-paced introduction. It's, um, the sentences are short and rapid. Uh, we use um, phrases instead of entire sentences. So I tried to capture the excitement and speed of the track for sprint events. What we wanted to show is that he grew up just, he, he wasn't in a superstar from the beginning. He grew up just like any other young boy from the country. There was nothing special about him at first. He took part in all school sports. He went to church with his mother. He went to Sunday school. His manager told me that a lot of people spoke about him eating a lot of yam and the yam helped to build his muscles and so on. But his, his manager told me that his diet, his early diet, which consisted of a lot of cow's milk, really helped him because his grandfather 
would bring cow's milk for him every day. And he loved it a lot at that time. Most young children now who grew up in the country get cow's milk in the morning. Not all of them are going to grow up to be Usain Bolts. I think definitely the 08 Olympics was when we realized that Usain Bolt was more than just a regular athlete. He was more than even just a talented athlete. He was something that the world had never seen before. He was beyond what anybody in Jamaica expected, anyone in the world expected. He was far superior to anybody, to what anybody had ever seen. So when he ran so easily in the 08 Olympics and, you know, he hit his chest and he was so casual about his win, I think that's when we realized that this man is something unique. One of the things that, that is important about Bolt is how good he is on big days. Bolt by the numbers is my effort to, to convey not just he's not just numbers, but he's numbers at a particular time, on a particular day, in a particular moment. So he's been able to, by himself, as a junior, as a high schooler, and as a professional, pull those numbers together so that winning gold medals has a number stacked on top of them. Numbers can confuse you. Numbers can paint a picture that is incomplete. I hope they'll be able to get in behind the numbers and see um, the texture of both the athlete and how good he really is. It's not just the world records, it's the dominance. It's being able to run your best in the championship final every year. It's the ability to overcome the physical constraints where we don't think someone that tall should be able to run that fast in the sprints and get a sense of how, and not take it for granted. One of the interesting stories that is told about his generosity is the fact that when he used to go to train at the University of the West Indies, he would carry large sums of cash with him and there would be large numbers of persons who would be um, near the track, not to watch um, Bolt or to get to, to meet him, but to tell hard luck stories and to get money from, from him. And he wouldn't chase them away at all. He was always giving money. And there came a time when there were disruptions, you know, fights began to, to break out over who was getting too much, who was being greedy and so on. And the police had to be called in. The management of Bolt had a difficulty in restraining him because he just wanted to give and he, he carried large sums of, of money. It was said that even at Christmas time he would have up to US $30,000 which he would be giving to people. So for security reasons they stopped that. The most important thing for me in terms of you know highlighting Bolt's career in relation to the final chapter in the book you see in Bolt's legend was pretty much trying to give people an idea of what he meant to us, and by us I don't mean Jamaicans, but track and field fans across the globe. Um, you see in Bolt is certainly a picture of resilience through challenges. Um, when he started out in athletics, he wasn't supposed to be as fast as he is given his, his physical stature. And his background, his development, wasn't one that was without challenges and he has certainly shown us as a people, um, as a world, that people can um, have success in spite of these challenges. I think it was important for us to point that out and um, to underline the vast impact and influence that he has had on the world, not just from a sporting perspective but also from a cultural um, one as well. The book is going to be available on the local market at the end of July. Um, we, we, we're working desperately to get it into the market before the World Championships actually begin. Um, stocks are, as we speak, on their way to the UK. So it's going to be in the UK for the World Championships, leading up to and during the World Championships. And this is, this is a fantastic production. I mean, it's one of the I mean, we've done in our company 350 to 400 books. This is one of the nicest books we've ever done. And the subject matter deserves it. For the Gleaner to do this, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, seeing a lot of pictures from back in the days of myself, is, is, it brings back a lot of just good memories. And it's always good to know that people track your career through the good and the bad, um, to the point where it's time to retire now. It's, it's, it's wonderful, so I want to thank them for that. I really appreciate it. This, venture in this move.